Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlecake Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I, we're going to talk about in kind of an interesting subject, something that we're calling freedom of martial arts. What does that mean? You're going to have to stick around and find out. Well, this is episode who knows what, because we've stopped numbering these as we record our intros and outros, because sometimes we have to rearrange them. And well, it just gives us a little bit more flexibility, but you probably And freedom. Saw... And free... Oh, oh, threw me on that one. I like that. <laughs> you already know what episode number this is. And so if you want to go to the show notes for this episode, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We bring you two episodes each and every week, all for free, all under the heading of connecting, educating, and entertaining the traditional martial artists of the world. And if that means something to you, if you have find value in that, you've got a lot of ways you can help us out. You can go to whistlekick.com, see all the things that we're doing. Some of those things we charge a little bit of money for. And if you pay for them, it supports what we're doing here with this show and this organization. You could also use the discount code podcast 15 helps us tie together. Hey, when someone bought that thing, it's because they listened to that show. Cool. Helps us justify the expense here. And, and, you know, I'm accountable to some people. There's some people that I need to show some things to. And so it helps connect those dots. Looks good, right? Looks good on the back end. But you've also got other things that you could do. You could share episodes. You could you could subscribe to the newsletter and find out what's going on there. You could, um, there's a tip jar set up at Martial Arts Radio's website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. There's a tip jar somewhere in there if you want to throw us a couple bucks. Or if you want to throw us a couple bucks on a recurring basis, you could contribute to the Patreon. Patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick. You're going to get extra exclusive content. At two bucks a month, you're going to find out what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, $5, you get a bonus episode. $10, you get bonus video. $25, $50, I think our top tier is $100 a month. And you know what? I work really, really hard to make sure that if you contribute, you're going to get more back than you put in. And I think we're doing a pretty good job of that because very rarely do people unsubscribe. That The the amount that we're, we're earning continues to go up. So we're doing something right there. Uh, what was it a, last week, Andrew? There, was it a, a video thing or an audio thing I put up? You were mentioning it. It was an audio. Uh, we, we, yeah. What, what, what was it? I was on vacation. I don't, I don't remember half <laughs> of what I did last weekend. I, I don't either. I don't either. At some point on Thursday, I did uh, some bonus audio and, and I, I gotta be honest, I forgot because we've already done a bunch of recording this morning. And so my brain is full of what we've just recorded and what we're about to record. Uh, but I, I make sure that we put up a bunch of stuff. You know what? Um, can you, can you look it up while I'm talking? Because sure, sure. I, I want to close the loop on this. I don't want to, um, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed that I've already forgotten. It's only been a few days. But the Patreon is an important part of what we do. Now on the training program side, we've got a strength program. We've got a speed development program. There's nothing like that in the world. If you want to get faster, this is the thing. This is the way to get faster as a martial artist. You find me another program that'll teach you how to get faster. Guess what? It's not by doing... 500 repetitions of something that doesn't make you faster. In fact, it makes you slower. I can prove it with science. You look like you're ready. I can't tell. No. So, I mean, I'd have to, I would have to listen to it to find out what you talked about. Oh, I didn't but, title it. Um, well, hang on. Hold on. See, this is the raw authenticity that you get with this show that every other show would edit out. We don't edit this out. We no. just, but you also, you did release a behind the scenes uh text you know just a just a yep. uh, 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 an email to all the patreons about like here's what's coming up and you talked about some of the upcoming guests uh so they got a kind of a sneak peek on that sort of and, stuff and tr- it's the only place that we do that the only place that we tell people what they're gonna see on the back end you know upcoming is in the patreon it's something that we reserve for them so if you want to know who's coming and i'm starting to add more and more context and you know, one of the things that we're looking at doing is expanding the value of the Patreon. We, we wanted to make it, we want to make it so brutally obvious that this is worth you contributing to, that we're yeah. putting, we're, we're slowly putting some more resources behind it. Well, we uh, just talked, we just talked this morning about you and I doing potentially a joint video project. Yeah. Exclusively for Patreon video subscribers. So that's pretty cool. I didn't say that's, yeah, I didn't say what the episode was about. That's the problem. Okay. The April 2021 exclusive podcast episode. It's a mystery. 
it is a mystery. All right. Well, apparently in the future, I have to add a little bit more descriptive text to that. <laughs> well, this is a weird intro. <laughs> this, this might be the weirdest intro we've ever done. Let's get into the subject matter. So freedom of martial arts, Andrew, what the heck does that mean? What are we, what are we talking about here? Well, um, freedom of freedom within martial arts, you are allowed. I mean, everyone's allowed to do whatever they want, but, uh, you know, you should be allowed to train in whatever style you want to. You should be allowed to have any opinion about martial arts that you want to. Does, doesn't necessarily mean that it's an opinion I'll agree with, but you're allowed to. The original kind of draft title of this episode was First Amendment of Martial Arts. And, you know, we, we, we chose not to run with that title for a few reasons. And we don't even talk about those reasons. But the reason that that's how it came out originally was what is the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution say? And for those of you who may not be U.S. citizens, you, you may not know, but I'm going to guess that you've actually heard this because it's such a fundamental part of what has become prominent in Western culture. The idea that speech should not be infringed. We refer to the First Amendment as freedom of speech, right? There's also other things in there. So freedom of martial arts. The reason the First Amendment is as cut and dry as it is, and unfortunately we're at a time when, when I, I, some people are starting to push back on it, and hopefully that doesn't change anything, is slippery slope. Because, and many of you have heard me say this over the years, if I say that is a martial art and that is not a martial art, I am in doing so claiming that I have the authority to do that. If I say someone's rank is illegitimate, what gives me the right, the authority to determine that? Why is my right to determine someone's rank greater than someone else's? Now, remember, as, an or as a pursuit, as a lifestyle, martial arts is not structured and organized in the same kind of government overseen way that some other things are. If we say, you know what, that is the best basketball team in the world. There's a good chance that if I make that statement, people are saying, oh, well, you're probably talking about the team in the NBA that won the finals last year, right? There's a reasonable assumption that that's what's going to happen because the best basketball players in the world generally end up in the NBA and they play and they're a team. Mm -hmm. And there's one organization that is by most people who are aware of the sport seen as the governing body, the authority in the space. It's, it's easier to quantify. Yeah. We don't have that in martial arts. Nope. We've never had that in martial arts. I hope we never do. No, I don't think it would benefit anything. Right. So if we don't have that central point, we don't have that governing body, why does one claim get to be more authoritative than another? I don't think it does. Now, that doesn't mean I have to agree with everything that somebody does, but it means that my, and, and I can even complain. I can say, I don't like what you're doing. That person doesn't have to listen. We have, we have equal right to determine what is and is not a martial art, what is and it is not legitimate. And when we do that, what does that leave us with? Worrying about ourselves. Exactly. Worry about your own darn training. There are a lot of people out there who spend a lot of time worried about what everybody else is doing and they don't train anymore. I don't care. I don't care what you think about what that other person is doing. I care about what you are doing to better yourself as a martial artist, what you're doing to better your students, your uh, fellow students. How are you helping your instructor? How are you supporting the martial arts as a, as an industry instead of just trying to, you know, sling mud around everywhere? Yeah. I think that the, the topic that comes up all the time, which I know you have discussed um, in episode 359 pretty extensively was the McDojo, the, mm -hmm. the quote, the term McDojo. Mm -hmm. And I, as a person, am absolutely welcome to feel that that school across the town doesn't do a good job. I, I'm, I'm allowed to have that opinion. Mm 
Absolutely. Um, that's part of the freedom. Like that school is allowed to do whatever they want. It doesn't mean that I have to agree with what they're doing, but it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It's just not for me. And, and let's, let's carry this out a little bit further because there are people who will say that school is illegitimate, teaches poor things, and should not exist. Mm. That is what a lot of people are trying to say. When, when we talk about freedom of martial arts, we are saying that, or at least I, I'm saying, I'll leave it to you to agree or not. I am saying that no one has the right to determine what is and is not legitimate what is and is not a martial art, who is and is not a martial artist. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a definition of what a martial art is. I have a definition of who a martial artist is. I've shared those on the show many times. I'll probably share them again in the future. And I'm allowed to have a different definition. Absolutely. And by having different definitions, it can lead to some wonderful discussion. But what happens when I say, let, let's say, for example, I've got well, I mean, I do. We have some reach here, right? Let's let's play out the hypothetical that would never happen where martial arts radio, a whistle kick by extension, takes a stance on a particular instructor and their school and their style being illegitimate and no one should patronize their school. Maybe they have tournaments. They should not go to them. And everyone should uh, actively disengage with them not just ignore them but but you know leave them hate on their social media etc let's pretend we did that one day it's going to come back mm. why do i or we get to say that is a martial art who has granted us the authority to do so and this is why the original show title had to do with first amendment of martial arts because in the First Amendment, the only reason it works is that it, it is absolute. The moment you start compromising it, well, what's what's hateful speech? Well, it differs between you and I. We might fi we'll find a lot of common ground, but what if I think this is hateful and you don't? Well, okay, so now do we remove everything that everyone thinks is hateful? There's no speech left. Yeah. Do yep. we remove everything that someone thinks is an illegitimate martial art? There's nothing left. Exactly. Do we remove everyone that someone thinks is a terrible instructor, is an illegitimate martial arts instructor for whatever reason? There's no one to teach martial arts. Yep. There I is no opportunity for gray in this subject because when you have gray, the only possible way that happens is it is as a slide down to the bottom, or it's because you were saying, I am more authoritative in my stance and thus I know more, I'm in a better position and everyone should listen to me and not someone else. Those are the only two options I see. And I don't think either of them are appropriate. No, and and I think you the, there's the cliche, you can't please all the people all the time. You can only please some of the people some of the time. There are people that I, look up to and, and follow on social media, martial artists who are, we've had them on the show, very well known, very, uh, I, I, I hate using this word reputable because that's not what I'm, I'm getting across, but famous? people that famous, yeah, and that are well looked up to, they have haters. Yeah. There are people that don't think what they're doing is good, but I think what they're doing is good. So should they stop doing what they're doing because that other person thinks no, it's absolutely not? absolutely not. Does that other person have the authority to say you're not, your rank is not recognized because you're not part of this organization? No, because no one has that authority. Right. Right. This has been, and will remain, I suspect, one of my pet peeves within our space for a very long time to come. And it means, it, it does mean that there are styles, schools, individuals who teach things that I think are absolutely ridiculous. I think they're silly. I think they're ineffective. I think, um, you know, there are instructors out there that I think are jerks. If people were not deriving value from training at those schools with those people in those styles, they wouldn't go. 
Absolutely. The, I, I'm, I'm a big free market guy. People know this. I, I've been very open about this. I'm, I'm a pretty staunch capitalist. Let the market figure it out. I'm not talking about free market capitalism in, in regard to things outside of martial arts at this moment, because that's not what this show is about. But I apply that here. If you are a martial arts instructor and you provide no value to your students, they're not going to show up. They're not going to part with their money. They're not going to part with their time. They're not going to invest their energy. It doesn't matter if you're legitimate or not in somebody else's eyes. You only have to make those people happy. Let's take an example completely outside of martial arts. Andrew, you're married. Mm -hmm. Does your wife think you are worth remaining married to? Well, she hasn't left yet, so exactly seems seem so. That, that is exactly the point. Does it matter if every other person on the planet thinks that you are not marriage material? I mean, my first wife didn't think I was. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you moved on. Yeah. Right. It, it's and and, and I, I I hope that we're good enough friends that that, that example is okay because it was, the, it was the best cut and dry one I could come up with. It doesn't yeah. matter what everyone else thinks. It matters what she thinks. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to me if everyone on the planet thinks this show is li worth listening to because you right now are listening to it or watching it. And that's what matters to me, that we have some attention. As long as there are some people who find what we do valuable, we'll keep doing it. Well, and the best part is even our haters will still watch this episode. I know. This episode will probably get a lot of flack. Because they're well, so you're saying that even yes, even though even that person, even that school, even that style, yes, even the most ridiculous things. Why? Because how else do you draw the line? If someone can give me a definition of what good martial arts is that is universally agreed upon, I will change my stance. Yep. But I would put everything that, that I would stake everything I own on the fact that we will never come up with that agreement. Yeah, I think I think you're right, and it, and it all boils down to everybody likes different things. You know, I I listen to a, a non martial arts podcast, and <gasps> one of the I know one of the tenets of the show is people like what they like, mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't get much more basic than that. People like what they like, and if someone is going to that school and likes it, who am I to say they're wrong? Right. Here, I bet many of us have found this. Have you ever participated in a martial arts school for a period of time, one that you enjoyed, loved, and you watched someone come in the door and then leave? Maybe not like that day, but they didn't stick around for long. Yeah. <gasps> Is that making a judgment that your school sucks? That it's not good enough? What if you find out that person went down the street to another martial arts school? Well, well, that school d doesn't matter. People like what they like. We have a finite amount of time, energy, money to invest in things. Every minute you spend complaining, every bit of energy you invest slinging mud, you could be training. You could be teaching. You could, if you care so much about martial arts, why not invest those resources in making yourself, people around you, better? Yep. Because let's face it, if there was an option, let's let's take a, a let's take a medium-sized city that has, you know, let's say a handful, five, six, seven, ten martial arts schools. Why do all of those schools exist? Because some, at least one person, wants something that is not provided by the others. If one of those schools was the absolute best in every possible way, the other schools wouldn't exist. Yeah. If there was a best car, other car companies couldn't compete. If there was a best place to live, everyone would live there. Now, there can be a best martial art for you. There can be a best car for you. There can be a best place for you to live. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times people get bent out of shape because 
what they value is not necessarily what other people value. If I come up with a new style of martial arts that I say is the absolute best thing in the world, I've I've taken the this from here and that from there and this and and and, and uh, turning and black belt, you learn how to fly. Okay, cool. There are going to be people who don't like that. Doesn't work for them. They're not going to try it. Now, some of those people will be will do it for, because they love what they do. Others will do it because they're afraid of what finding something better might mean to them. And it doesn't matter because we all have freedom as martial artists to define what martial arts is to us and to train in whatever way satisfies the conditions that create value for us. Yep, a- absolutely. And if you continue to surround yourself with people that feel the same way, you don't have to worry about what other people are doing or saying. Yep. So let's sum this up. Number one, nobody has the right to tell you that your rank, your form, your instructor, your school are illegitimate. No, that doesn't mean they're not going to do it, but they don't have the right to do it. And they're welcome to think it if they want to. Yep. Yep. There is a difference between an opinion and a judgment. Uh, There are plenty of things that I think as opinions are not worth the time, not worth the energy. They're, they're silly. They're wasteful, but if it works for someone else, who am I to take that away from them? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's okay to have an opinion. You know, Uh, some people don't feel that boxing is a martial art Mm -hmm. that, you know what, they're allowed to say, you know what, my opinion boxing is not a martial art okay your definition of martial art is different what they what they don't i don't want to say don't because they have freedom of speech they can they can say whatever they want but to be authoritative and say quote boxing is not a martial art there's a difference between i don't think boxing is a martial art and boxing is unequivocally not a martial art and anyone who boxes is not a martial artist and if you box and you think you're a martial artist, you're wrong. Yeah, exactly. It, it's a, there's some nuance in there, right? We're we're getting we're getting kind of kind of philosophical here because there are people who think that and have the right to think that. Yep. But n- when when those thoughts become a desire to enforce that belief on others who do not share it, yeah, that's where it becomes problematic. Yep, I'm with you. Okay. And let's remember, as martial artists. We are better when we have conflict, sparring, self-defense, free form movement that involves other people. That's a, a type of conflict. It's, it's orchestrated. It's not real. If Andrew and I spar, it's not because I hate him or I'm trying to take his lunch money. But we get better because we have that exchange back and forth. Mm-hmm. If we have differing opinions, by discussing them, we get to reinforce and explore and understand our ideas. And this show has been a big part of that for me. And this is one of the reasons, Andrew, I'm glad that you are part of the show because instead of me kind of talking in a vacuum, you know, sometimes we disagree. Yep. Best of the best. Is a terrible movie. (laughs) Says, says you, and you're allowed to think that. And I I am allowed to, I am allowed to think that. (laughs) And you're wrong. (laughs) (laughs) It's a, it's a silly, but it's a great example. Yeah. If I think that movie sucks, because I think it does, but I'm it entitled doesn't. to that. I don't need to watch it. But when I say, if I'm going to go further and say, Andrew, you shouldn't watch it anymore. If you're going to watch it, we're not going to be friends. That's worse. Or if I campaign to whatever the company that owns it and says, you know what? This movie is so terrible that you should never allow anyone else to watch it. And I invest my time in that. That's where it's a problem. Yeah. That's where I'm overstepping because why would I de- want to deprive Andrew? If Andrew genuinely enjoys that movie, why, I really would, I do. De- why would I want to deprive him of something that he enjoys? It doesn't People like what they like. Watches it. it doesn't hurt me that he thinks it's great and I don't. We, we Where's the value here? We enjoy picking on each other about it. <laughs> right? That's the yep. best part of it. So freedom of martial arts. You have the freedom to train how you want, where you want, with whom you want, in whatever style you want. And if people don't like that, that is their problem, not yours. And people are allowed to think what they want. Yep. 
and we're going to have some people who disagree with this. Yep. And I am open to discussion. I'm open to hearing about it. If you have feedback on this, I would love for it to be public. So there's two places where engaging on this would be most appropriate. Number one, at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com under, uh, as a comment on whatever episode this ends up being. Two, in the Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio behind the scenes Facebook group. If you're not part of that group, go ahead, go join that group. We, we have some fun in there. And I would love to see more conversation coming out of these shows because I think we are better when we have these conversations. Anything to add before we roll out? No, I don't think so. All right. Well, thanks for watching, listening, everybody. And if you want to support us, remember, you got a bunch of stuff you can do. You can buy books, leave reviews, share episodes, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Make a purchase at whistlekick.com. Use the code podcast15. And of course, we have our training programs. If you want to get faster, I'm telling you, if, I, I don't know a martial artist in the world who doesn't want to be faster. The training protocol that we wrote supplements with everything else that you do takes a few minutes a day and you will get faster. I will guarantee it. If you follow it, you will get faster and you'll probably get faster with that than anything else that you've ever done. So give it a try. If you have feedback, topics, guest suggestions, whatever that is, email me, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media is at whistlekick everywhere you can think of. And that's all we got for today. So until next time, train hard, train hard, smile, smile, and have a great day. Have a great day.